Good day, friends of Buzzy. It's been a while. Thank you for all of the likes and subscribes that you've given us in the past. Hopefully you're getting notified about this. And um, today I'm going to talk about updates from everything we talked about during COVID. So if you recall, we talked a lot about nasal irrigation. So here are the things that we were right about, things that we were wrong about, and what is new in the world of preventing and decreasing the severity of COVID. So for those of you just joining my fetish with nasal irrigation, um, the idea was that on April 26, 2020, putting together the lower number of people who had COVID in, <coughs> yeah, in Southeast Asia, um, the fact that older people got it, especially men, and not so much women who don't have sinuses, was like, it's got to be going in through the sinuses. And how can we clear something out of the sinuses? Well, in Southeast Asia, they do nasal irrigation. Let's try that. Then it was also thinking, well, you know, betadine is something they use for sinus surgeries when people have ongoing impacted bacterial infections and beta is good for viruses, so let's try that. Here's how it all came out. It turns out that yes, if you use nasal irrigation, 240 cc's, which is basically a cup, twice a day with saline, you decrease the likelihood of catching COVID 10 times, and you decrease the likelihood of hosp hospitalization or um, death about 11 times. So those numbers may vary. Hopefully, um, I was hoping to have some news on the paper by the time I did this, but by the next time, uh, we should have a happy in-press notice to share on the Med Archive nasal irrigation paper. There are a couple new things we've learned though. So question one, does putting some kind of bactericidal up your nose decrease your getting sick? It doesn't. Um, so there's a couple studies that looked at betadine and nasal irrigation and with viruses, specifically with COVID, they did not find that it reduced viral load and there wasn't a significant difference clinically. In our own study, the one person who was hospitalized was actually in the betadine group. So I think we understand now, thanks to some work by um, a doctor in Belgium named Susie Hegenbart, that there are really five reasons why nasal irrigation works. And to know, to understand this, um, I'm gonna bring up two papers that we talked about uh, during COVID and, and sort of explain how to make these two papers make sense. So there was one paper by um, Kyle Kimura, who is now out at Stanford, and he looks at baby shampoo and nasal irrigation versus nasal irrigation with just saline versus control. And he found a significant difference in his interim analysis with 15 in each group, significant difference in symptoms that declined. And he's like, we're checking the nasal load, the viral load, we're gonna see what that does. A couple months later, a study comes out by this guy, Esther, and it's titled Failure of surfactant to be viricidal in COVID-2. And the whole paper is about the fact that baby shampoo in this group of people did not kill the virus, but it gave a picture of clinical outcomes and it sure looked like the clinical experience of both of the different groups who were doing irrigation was better, but they didn't even comment on the statistics. So that's weird. Here's what I think is going on. The five reasons why nasal saline irrigation works do not have anything to do, I really believe now, with lowering the viral load. It made a lot of sense to me. The nice thing is if you're using a navage, you can see your boogers at the bottom and you're like, oh, I'm doing some good here. I don't think that's what's doing it. Viruses replicate so fast that I don't think you're getting rid of enough to cause variolation. Instead, what saline does is it decreases any barriers in the ciliated epithelia where the virus can get directly in. That's one. 
what it does is it increases the size of the mucus that's covering all of your nasal passages. So quite literally, the virus can't get in to the ciliated, to the ACE2 receptors on the epithelia as easily. So just, I mean, a simple volume thing. Um, third thing is that having a hydrated nasal biome um, actually makes it possible for the virus to be tricked and to be moved out to the surface where it may replicate. So ironically, if you've got a really healthy hydrated nasal system, you might have more virus on the surface because the biome is actually tricking the virus to go out rather than in. Cool, right? So that's thing three. Thing four is that saline itself is ionic when it's in in liquids. So the sodium and the chloride, some number of them get little sodium plus ions and little chloride negative ions. And so this ionicity actually acts as a repellent keeping SARS-CoV-2 spike proteins from joining into the ACE2. So that's it. And then number five is that the, the saline itself seems to inhibit the furin cleavage that is necessary for the spike protein to go into the ACE2 and for them to fuse. So, so five reasons why just being hydrated may help and then having saline may help. Now, there is some debate about whether or not hypertonic saline, so instead of it being the same salt as in tears, it's like three times that salt. So there's some debate about whether or not having more salt is more. I think the jury is still out on that. Um, there are other reasons, though, why having a, a hydrated saline area in your brain also may make you less likely to get sick. And that is because when you have saline around viruses or mucus, if it's bigger, the, you know, instead of being a tiny little aerosol that you breathe in, um, if, it's, if it's a lump, you actually are going to cough it out. So loogies are part of a a reason why people can be less likely to get sick is, um, as Shrek says, better out than in. If you can have whatever is draining, if you can have it be a big clump and either blow it out or cough it out into, into a Kleenex or whatever, that's going to be helpful too. So the bottom line of all of this is that we started more than two years ago thinking about ways to decrease severity from COVID. And now there's a study in Mexico that showed 10 times fewer healthcare workers got COVID versus um, when they were irrigating and gargling versus those that didn't. So we've got a prevention aspect. We know that if you do do irrigation, you're less likely to get severely sick. And actually in our study, we found that there was a dose response. People who irrigated two times a day or more were highly significantly less, um, had a shorter duration of symptoms, even if some of them had had symptoms for fewer days beforehand and you would have anticipated that then they would have probably felt more sick and that's why they got tested and they would have lasted longer. It's still a shorter. So that's pretty cool. If anybody has questions about COVID, I am delighted to answer them. We will be resuming some of our Facebook Lives. The next time I'm going to talk about some really exciting new findings with understanding how the brain processes pain. And there's amazing stuff that has come out of the help and addiction long term. We have made, as you know, a low back pain device uh, as of June 21st. It's being tested and we'll have more updates on that. And there's exciting things coming up with pain chaperone molecules, being able to actually almost like a tricorder, see where pain's happening. Super cool. Please join in, like, subscribe if you want to know when I am putting up new information. I will not put things up unless I think they're interesting and fun, so you may not know about it right away, but if you want to know the latest on everything related to pain management, uh, certainly mechanical stimulation, needle phobia, and COVID, then join us. Thank you so much, everybody, and be well.